Welcome to Seed to Life. Are you like me who feel motivated to eat healthy by looking at the fresh, crispy and clean veggies? If you are, then we are going to germinate some pea microgreens at home that to just in water, no fertilizers, no soil and no hassle. And you get this in less than 2 weeks. Isn't it effortless gardening? We are hearing a lot about a fancy term microgreens. What exactly are microgreens? Are they same as sprouts or different? If they are different than sprouts, then are they same as baby greens? Are they healthier than greens? Are you getting these questions? Let's find out more. Why is growing own microgreens is becoming more popular nowadays? I don't think this question needs any answering. During lockdown most of us have faced food shortage especially the shortage of fresh food not all of us are gardeners or have space or liking or capacity to grow our own food to grow microgreens we don't need any special equipment just some clean water a cooking pot and a colander and we are all set let me share some interesting thing with you Did you know that there is more interest shown even by space researchers about growing such microgreens and fast growing vegetables in space? They are working on a school program named Vegetable Production System or Veggie. The goal of this program is to supplement the fresh edible supply of food in space to reduce the necessity of resupply and most importantly to provide astronauts with fresh and nutritious veggies because we all know that nothing beats the fresh food. It tastes so much better than the packaged food and good for our health too, isn't it? Then there is another program named as Plant Habitat O2, which is also designed to grow fresh vegetables in the space. If we see in a few decades space colonies with beautiful indoor gardens, I won't be surprised. Now, enough dreaming and <laughs> let's get back to our work. As we start growing our yellow pea microgreens, I will explain the differences between the term sprouts, microgreens, baby greens and mature plants. I have taken a cup of yellow peas and washed them thoroughly at least 2 to 3 times. Then soak them in water for about 8 to 10 hours. The next day, drain out the water and wash them one more time and then spread them on a colander or any tray with holes that will provide adequate air circulation. Then keep a water-filled container under this colander to provide continuous moisture to the growing roots. As the seeds germinate, they will grow towards the water and stay hydrated. You can cover this colander with a plate or damp cloth. Generally, I use plate so that everything stays clean. But because the peas are harder compared to some other beans, I am going to cover them up with a moist paper towel, and then put a lid on the top. When you soak the seeds the first product that you get are sprouts. These are the growing roots. You can't just cook the beans as they are. You need to soak them in water overnight. Soaking them make the pulses easier to digest. Pulses contain many anti-nutritional factors that can negatively affect the absorption of nutrients so this processing is very important to get the best out of them. Sprouts get ready in just about 2 to 3 days and you can add these sprouted beans to your salad or use them in different recipes. But what will happen if you cover them up from above? Then the roots will grow longer and longer. The leaves cannot develop well because they are not getting adequate light necessary for the formation of the new leaves. Here you can see my mung bean sprouts growing enormous roots. Just from the 2 cups of mung beans I got a week supply of healthy salad sprouts. If you want to grow microgreens you need to be a little more patient. Microgreens are young seedlings about 2 to 3 weeks old. Here are my pea microgreens growing in this colander. They are just 12 days old and you can see the roots have already filled up the entire pot. I can continue growing these seedlings for another week. Their growth rate is increasing every day. Once they cross this 3 uh, weeks mark, the roots and the stems become little more fibrous and they lose value as microgreens. Even at this point, the roots are not going to be very delicate like they were when they were just sprouts. Keeping them longer than 3 weeks will make them baby greens. I am not sure if they can still continue to grow without any nutrition other than a grow light near them and water. Baby greens are young seedlings that are a few weeks old. 
that is when they produce young tender small leaves you must have seen baby spinach or kale in salad mix once the roots and stems become fibrous they are not much edible as they lose tenderness but you can still harvest the leaves pea leaves also taste good i am going to harvest these pea shoots and keep the roots in water to grow them again pea microgreens are known to grow back i am curious to know how many times i can harvest the shoots if you're not planning to regrow again then they can be a great addition to your compost bin this is day 12 and i'm harvesting some microgreens the roots are still not very hard but i want to keep them longer to grow back more shoots Are microgreens more nutritious than their mature counterparts? Let's see why this recent hype. What makes microgreens so glamorous? Microgreens in general are compactly packed with a high concentration of many bioactive components like ascorbic acid, carotenoids, phylloquinone and tocopherols. <laughs> All good things, making them more nutritious, but not necessarily they are always better than the mature leaves. It depends on the variety of microgreens. For example, red cabbage, cilantro, garnet, amaranth and green taikon radish microgreens are more nutritious than the mature leaves. Whereas kale and mustard microgreens contain less nutrition compared to that you get from the mature plants. The vegetables that are hated like broccoli and cauliflower, their microgreens contain more phytonutrients than their mature counterparts. According to some studies the concentration of one chemical carotenoid increases for the first 7 to 10 days and then decreases after that. So overall the nutritional value may change depending on the plant but still we get good nutrition from the microgreens at a very low cost. There is one more thing that I would like to point out is that some researchers have noticed that the plants grown in water contain less chlorophyll carotenoids and some other phytonutrients than their more mature counterparts. Also, the type and amount of light they receive affects the amount of ascorbic acid in the leaves. But rather than picking our brains on all these technical aspects, we can just enjoy this delicious food grown by us in only two weeks. Now, let's look at the different growing media that we can use. I'm growing these peas in water, but you can use potting mix, coco coir, peat moss, sand or other growing media that you prefer. I just found this quick and easy, but I regularly grow some baby greens in pots or compost bins outdoor too. Mostly fenugreek. Now let's look at some problems that we might face while growing microgreens and what are the ways to avoid them. The growing media has to be kept clean as much as possible to make growing microgreens successful. I changed water every day, used it for watering some other plants and didn't waste it. The air circulation near this growing container has to be good to prevent gnats. It is better to use a wide container to have adequate spacing. This is important because as the seeds germinate, the sprouts start bulging and they can become very crowded. Even here, I should have used fewer peas. You can see the seeds are all clumped together. Not all the seeds are able to reach the water below. Otherwise, there would be many more sprouts. The same thing happened with the mung bean sprouts and at one spot, I saw some fungus developing. So air circulation plays a key role in the success. The sprouts also could get affected by bacterial infection if the seeds are infected. Actually, this is the main reason why I like to grow my own microgreens rather than buying them from store. 
I feel assured that I'm using clean water and also checking the sprouts and taking any bad ones out carefully. I hope you like this video and will grow your own microgreens soon. A big thanks to you for watching my videos and supporting my channel Seed to Life. Please click subscribe for more such videos and updates. Click the bell icon to get notified about future videos. And feel free to reach out to me through comments, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram if you have any questions. I am posting the links in the description. I would love to hear your suggestions and would like to know the news of your garden. Happy gardening. Thank you again. See you soon.